In this video, we're going to continue talking about Gregor Mendel and look at what made his experiments great, or as some would argue, too great. We're going to look at the success of his experiments and the reception of his paper once he wrote up his findings. Uh, so firstly, his experimental success. One of the reasons that he was so successful in his experiments is that he chose traits that were either or, they were distinct traits. So for example, he had purple flowers or white flowers. There were no other colours of flowers and there was no range between purple or white. It was one or the other. This made it very easy to study. Uh, also, he could actually see these factors. He could see that one was purple and one was white, so they were also observable. Uh, these factors that are distinct factors these days, either or factors, we still call Mendelian traits. And unfortunately in humans, there's not very many of them. Uh, so when we look at examples, they're generally uh, fairly blurry, like we talk about eye colour and hair colour, but they're actually caused by many different factors working together. Another reason that he was so successful is he stopped cross-pollination between the different plants. What he would do is actually go with scissors and cut off the sperm-producing organs of one plant and cut off the egg-producing organs of the other plant and then he'd mate them together using a paintbrush to collect the pollen from that one that only had those male organs and take it to the one that only had the female organs. This way there was no chance that the wrong plants could pollinate each other. Another thing he did to make sure that his experiments were really good is he ensured that he had a true breed plants to start with. So that is plants that were purely purple and plants that were purely white. And he did this by breeding each variety for two years and knocking any of those that don't have that pure purple or white uh, variety out of the gene pool so that he bred them over and over and over again to make sure that he only had white and only had purple flowers. He also only looked at one particular trait at a time and kept very very detailed records of all these different plants. And so he was very meticulous in all his experiments and he got results that were statistically improbable. Uh, but amazing all the same. Once he'd collated all his findings and wrote his paper, he sent it to lots and lots of different universities across Europe and in London. However, none of them really picked it up. He was unknown as a scientist. He was a monk living in Austria. And the stuff that he was doing was so far beyond any of the knowledge at the time that the people at the universities probably just didn't understand it. Eventually a journal did pick up his paper and it was published in 1866, however it was a fairly obscure journal at the time and while most people probably didn't get to see it, those people who did see it pretty much ignored it. It wasn't until about 35 years later when more was known about genetics and how things in the cell worked that somebody came across this paper and rediscovered all these findings. And that's when it re his findings really changed genetics to be the way that we see it today. In this video, we've talked about how improbably successful Mendel's experiments were, uh, how he controlled for crossbreeding, took meticulous notes, looked at one trait at a time and only traits that were distinct and observable. And we've looked at the reception, which was less than impressive. And basically nobody knew about his work for 35 years. However, fortunately, because of Mendel, we have so much more understanding of genetics than we did prior to him. Thanks, Mendel. Peace out, guys.